Good morning, everybody. This is Yochai Lama of Forex Crunch and Market Movers doing the live morning show for FX Street. Today is Tuesday, October 20th, and we have uh, quite a few developments, even though we don't have too many indicators. So as usual, um, we'll have here uh, talk about the recent developments, various charts and levels, and of course, the next 24 hours. And most importantly, uh, your questions on the chat as usual. If you can't see the chat box, the address is here. And I certainly welcome all of your questions as usual. Okay, so let's see what we had recently. Uh, first of all, the most recent uh, release was that German PPI missed with a drop of 0.4 in prices. It was worse than expected and shows once again that there are inflationary pressures in uh, deflationary pressures in the Eurozone. Uh, Switzerland's trade balance came out better than expected at 3 billion. And the Eurozone current account, which was released uh, basically just now, uh, came out uh, lower than expected a bit um, for August 17.7 billion, lower than 22 billion, and more or less uh, in line with trade balance. But the big event that we had earlier uh, is the Canadian elections. In uh, Canada, we have a new government, a uh, new prime minister, Justin Trudeau, is going to be prime minister instead of Stephen Harper. Harper was uh, the leader of the country for around a decade, and his conservative party was beaten by Justin Trudeau um, of the Liberal, Liberal Party, and that uh, is already impacting the currencies, uh, the Canadian dollar. So let's just look immediately. Okay, now we have a bit of a change, but what we can see is that despite a rise in oil prices, the Canadian dollar has been hurt. So we see here, and uh, dollar CAD climbing all the way above uh, 130 and reaching a peak of 130.47. Uh, it fell short of 130.67. Uh, now we're seeing the US dollar slide once again. So we're back under 130. But in general, um, the elections in Canada uh, hurt the Canadian dollar a bit. Why is that? Uh, first of all, markets always prefer a conservative government and stability. So Stephen Harper uh, was in power for 10 years and we knew what's going on. And with um, Justin Trudeau, he's uh, relatively young, relatively new. He's only 43 years old, uh, less experience, and he wants to enact new policies uh, that might be not so friendly to the business community, the oil production. They might be better for the country as a whole, but perhaps not for the Canadian dollar. Uh, this includes perhaps running deficits in Canada, uh, a non-balanced budget, which is, of course, uh, uh, what markets like a bit less, but uh, might be better for the Canadian people. And he might, uh, there's also some talk that he might change the direction in which the um, uh, Bank of England maintains its, uh, Bank of uh, Canada, sorry, makes its policy. That means it might raise the inflation target. So if the mandate of the Bank of Canada is changed to have a higher inflation target, it means a weaker Canadian dollar, more quantitative, sorry, more rate cuts, and perhaps some QE also in Canada. These are only speculations. He still hasn't assumed office, and he has other uh, topics on his agenda, uh, like legalizing marijuana, uh, women's rights, indigenous rights, things that are not really market related, of course, important for the Canadian people, but less important for markets. The initial reaction was a sell-off in the Canadian dollar, but as we can see now, uh, there's new stuff uh, coming, a weaker US dollar across the board, so it's not exactly um, a sustained reaction, but that was the big uh, news uh, from tonight. Okay, um, another thing we had uh, tonight was RBA meeting minutes in Australia. We had the Reserve Bank of Australia more upbeat on the economy, uh, seeing a shift towards more internal consumption, less uh, reliance on China. And uh, this was sort of, in theory, shows that the Reserve Bank of Australia, that Glenn Stevens is not really into uh, cutting rates once again. But these minutes are from a meeting that came before the decision by Westpac to raise mortgage rates. So uh, it doesn't reflect the new reality. So what did we have in Australia? We had new regulatory change um, that forced banks to uh, be a bit a bit more prudent and Westpac, one of the biggest banks, decided to raise mortgage rates. Now, if uh, mortgage rates are higher in one bank, they'll be higher in other banks. 
if they're higher everywhere, that allows the Bank of uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, the central bank, to cut rates. So it's still uh, quite open regarding what we'll see in the November meeting. If I'm not mistaken, it's November 3rd when uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia convenes. Currently, the interest rate in the land down under is 2%, and it might fall to 1.75. We'll have lots more speculation in the two weeks ahead. Okay, so these were the main events. Um, and let's look at them. Before I move to today's uh, events, uh, let's look a bit at the charts. And uh, good morning, everybody, also. Um, hi, Jax or Wild. Hi, Rob. Hi, Enran. Hi, Pan. Um, so uh, let's talk about, uh, let's begin from the beginning, Euro dollar. So just as the show began, we had some action. We had Euro dollar move back up. But look what you can see here. Uh, this is the shoulder, a wide, wide shoulder. This is the head, the false break above 114.60 and almost to 115. And then the fall all the way to the shoulder at 113.40 and eventually a drop below the shoulder to uh, 113.05 uh, yesterday. Okay, now we're sh uh, seeing weakness in the US dollar and the pair breaking back higher to 113.50 almost, 113, yeah, 113.50 is the current level we're seeing in euro dollar. Now we have uh, speculation, of course, towards the ECB meeting on, on Thursday, um, a bit more than two days to go. We'll cover that, of course, live. And um, many are expecting the ECB to hint about more action in, in December. Action means um, I, two, two things, two possible things. Um, one is extending QE, extending the euro printing scheme beyond September 2016 uh, to 2017-18 or forever. And the bigger option, bigger uh, tool uh, in the shed, if you wish, is um, extending the size, uh, expanding the size from 60 billion euros a month to 80 or 100 or any other bigger sum. In any case, no action is expected in October because we've already heard from the ECB that um, uh, they want to wait for more data and they have really they really have new forecasts early in December. But they might hint this time, and Draghi knows how to use his uh, verbal skills in order to um, hint about action in December, thus uh, weighing on the euro already now. But the big question is, is this already priced in? Is this big fall that we've seen last week from the highs uh, came after Novotny's uh, comment. Is everything already uh, priced in? Uh, so this is an, op an open question. We'll see lots more of the speculation towards the big event. Um, and I think the ECB in general does not want to see a strong euro, um, but it uh, doesn't want to also waste its tools. So it, uh, like, like everybody, I guess, in this world, prefer using words than taking action. So let's see if the what the ECB does on Thursday. We'll talk about that, of course, more in detail on Thursday. But we need to know already now that uh, tension is building in markets. Um, let's uh, move on to the pound. Still a bit depressed under 155. Uh, 155.20 was uh, this resistance that I drew here on the chart. Um, 154.50 is uh, the line that we've seen yesterday, but to be more correct, 154 is more of a line of uh, support. So it's clear separator of ranges, 154 line. Currently, when higher range between 154 and 155, the lower range is uh, 152 to 154, so a wider range on the downside. On the upside, we have another round number, 156, as we've seen that line tackled not so long ago. Um, dollar yen, um, dollar yen 119.62, uh, also moving higher. So I would say it's more like uh, the classic risk off now in markets where the yen is sold off and the dollar is sold off, but not the euro. The safe haven euro now is uh, in demand, but for the wrong reasons, not as being a safe haven. So this is what we're seeing in the last hour or so, okay? In general, last week we saw dollar yen plunge and the terrible retail sales report in the United States all the way down to 118.10 and then we've seen it rise back up getting closer to this magnate 
to this uh, level it really loves uh, the 120 level so the high so far has been 119.77 and let's see if we can continue moving higher currently 119.60 and uh, 120 is the level it's hugging. The big event is exactly in 10 days' time, the decision of the Bank of Japan. Currently, there are lower chances for BOJ action. That means a uh, higher chance of dollar yen falling. But the game is on, speculation is on. Dollar CAD, we talked about it earlier because of the elections. Uh, so these are the levels I'm watching. Uh, hugging 130, also here, 129. Uh, was a small double bottom, but 128.25 is the real bottom. Uh, 130.67, 130.70 is um, resistance on top with further resistance at 131.20. Okay, the Aussie. So yesterday we drew here uh, this uh, triangle. Um, I'm not sure it's that uh, accurate. But for those technical traders, maybe you should draw your own lines and check it out. It may be interesting. We're seeing an Aussie dollar trade in a narrowing range. Uh, this line is from early October. Mostly support line seems a bit more uh, reliable. Began on October 8th, formed on, on the 14th, and uh, continuing to provide uh, uptrend support. Downtrend resistance is from 70, almost 74. Um, and we usually, in technical analysis, we usually see a, a breakout of this uh, figure, of this triangle, of this wedge, pendant, whatever you call it. Um, what we've seen uh, yesterday uh, is Chinese data came out better than expected, but many people doubt the numbers anyway. The Australian dollar got some relief, but still around the 7285, 72 level, which was the post Fed high. Okay. Let's talk about Kiwi dollar and see if you have any questions. So Kiwi dollar is in high range, 68.27, uh, support at 67.40, and uh, later uh, and to the upside, 69 is the level it touched last week, and it continues serving as resistance. Okay, let's uh, take a look and see your questions. Uh, good morning, Jax are wild. I'm getting a Asian session on video, but no live feed. Um, let me see if I can um, post at least this one here. Maybe this helps you. It's on my website. It's the um, post I did. It should show today's uh, action. In any case, uh, let's continue with more. Uh, looking for more uh, questions. Uh, can you see the slide, by the way? Yeah, uh, not the slide, sorry. The, um, you can see the chart and let's let's continue. Let's see what we have today. Um, so we have quite a few events on our agenda today. At 10 GMT, we have the Bank of Canada's Mark Carney talking um, in, uh, sorry, Bank of England. He's a Canadian and I'm confused with the Canadian elections, uh, but he's the governor of the Bank of England, of course. He will talk in Parliament, in the uh, British Parliament in Westminster. And uh, one of the things on the agenda is the question of Brexit, a British exit from the European Union. What are the monetary implications, implications for uh, the British economy? That will be interesting to hear. Um, it's currently sort of on the back burner of the pound, of course, uh, high on the agenda of, of UK politics. but still does not have a material impact on the pound. The big topics for the pound, of course, is will they, won't they, regarding the rates, okay? We have at uh, the big event for today, after, of course, Canadian elections, at half past 12, we have building permits in the United States and housing starts. Two figures from the housing market. Let's take a look here at what we're expecting. This is the FX Street calendar on Forex Crunch. So, and uh, building permit and housing starts. Let's start with that because it's the first. We have, uh, we've seen an improvement in general. If you look at the chart, we've seen the terrible years of 2009, 10, and 11, and then an improvement. And continuing into the recent future, this uh, gradual improvement. Last month, we had 1.126. 
that was for uh, August. Now for September, we're expecting 1.15 million uh, housing starts for this month. Remember, this is an annualized level, so it's not 1 million 150,000 uh, housing starts in September, but uh, on the annualized version, okay? In any case, it's always published in this format. So we're expecting a small improvement on building permits, which have uh, more or less a similar chart, also terrible years in the recession, and then a gradual upswing and, and recently an acceleration. Well, we're expecting more of the same 1.17 million. Now, um, these figures are released at the same time and relate to the same market, but sometimes they go in opposite directions. So if you have uh, housing starts beat and building permits miss, that's, um, um, that could make and trigger confusion in markets. Okay, if both of them go in the same direction, it would be quite meaningful for the US dollar. So if both of them come be out below expectations, we could have the US dollar fall because we've seen housing recently was one of the strongest uh, sectors in the US economy. Strong and steady, not, not too much of a bubble, let's say maybe perhaps in some regions, but in general, it has been quite good. Um, and we're expecting the we're expecting more of the same. And if we have a disappointment there, it, it's a warning sign for the Fed. It could be really negative for the dollar, pushing back rate hike expectations even further into the future. If we have a beat on both numbers, both building permits and housing starts, it's of course positive for the U.S. economy and could boost the dollar. Okay, so this is the main event I'm looking at today. Um, then at 1 GMT, uh, uh, Bill Dudley of the New York Fed speaks. Um, he's um, more, he's in the center. He's, he's spoken quite a lot in recent weeks. And he has, uh, uh, in August, he's been a bit dovish, talking against the rate hike and this proved, proved uh, correct. And now let's see what he says after the recent inflation figures, which were good and retail sales figures, which were terrible. And after the jolts and after everything else, let's see if he provides us some hint towards the Fed meeting uh, in one week and one day on October 28th. Nobody's expecting a rate hike next week, but uh, we might get hints if December is still on the cards or not. Last time he said, like Fisher, that it's an expectation, not a commitment to raise rates this year in 2015. Okay, then we have Jerome Powell, also of the Fed. He usually doesn't talk about monetary policy. Let's see if he says something this time. In the three, we have Janet Yellen, the chair of the Federal Reserve, but this time it's only brief remarks at some ceremony. And uh, I'm not highlighting this event because we don't expect any comment on monetary policy from her this time. And for those of you trading the New Zealand dollar, we have the GDT price index, the global dairy trade, or the price of milk, to put it simply. Uh, so we have, uh, we're expecting we had four uh, auctions, four consecutive gains over there. And um, maybe this time we'll see a drop back down. It has always has an immediate impact on the New Zealand dollar. Okay, so these are the main events for today. At night, we don't have anything special, nothing uh, worth mentioning. Of course, we have some releases in Japan and Australia, but these are, uh, but they're really second tier or third tier events. Um, let's see if uh, uh, we have more. Uh, we have more questions. Um, Jax, I hope you're, and Jake, I hope you can all see the video. And yeah, if you refresh the screen, if you try YouTube, you can see the video. Uh, and of course, post your questions. If you've missed uh, so far some things on the show, we've talked about the recent events, uh, upcoming events, and we looked at the main charts, Canadian elections, and um, yeah, Jax, you're not the last man alive after the apocalypse, we're still here, <laughs> don't worry. Um, anyway, if you have a specific question or anybody else about Canadian elections, uh, ECB meeting, anything relate, um, else, uh, housing starts in the United States, things we've talked about, we could, of course, uh, briefly repeat anything. Okay, so welcome to the show. Sorry for your technical uh, issues, everybody. 
and uh, let's continue with uh, more uh, topics, um, more uh, charts. Okay, so we about dollar Swiss, we had a better than expected um, trade balance in Switzerland, and now we we're seeing it's partly because of this and partly because of the USD weakness in the last uh, two hours or so. We're seeing dollar Swiss slide back down. It has reached 95.80 and now it's down to 95.20. Uh, real support there is at 94.70, which was a low uh, last week. And the upside we have, uh, maybe this would be a better line here. 96.40 would be a better line. On the top side, or perhaps, perhaps this one right here, which was the peak uh, just uh, not many hours ago, right here. Okay, so these are the levels I'm watching, but um, it's important to remember the Swiss National Bank, Bank intervenes in uh, trade too often, so it's not the best currency to trade. Uh, Euro Swiss, uh, um, SNB cares about this more than anything else. 108.30, we've seen it, this uh, cross break down out of range, trading at lower levels. Uh, let's see if it can go below one, um, one, um, 107.80. A more interesting cross is Euro Pound. We've also seen similar to Euro Dollar, a head and shoulders pattern, a bit more uh, complicated here. A bit uh, multi-tiered if you wish we've seen one big shoulder here low shoulder high shoulder head another short high shoulder and then low shoulder here and now we're at lower ground 73.40 is where we are at now and uh, let's see if we can uh, move to lower levels um uk economy is doing better than the eurozone economy but forex trading is never a one-way street, okay? Euro-yen, Euro-yen uh, was capped uh, by the 135.60 level. Now it's at 135.80, we've seen it break higher. Let's see if it's sustained. Uh, the real resistance, high resistance at 137 and low one at 133.15. We've talked about this a few times in the past. Um, and one of your favorites is moving higher. Um, that's the pound against the yen. So um, the pound against the yen uh, is higher. Uh, it reached a level of 185.50. Real resistance, strong resistance, I mean, is 186. We've mentioned that a few times. As support, um, I wouldn't, well, 184.80 was resistance earlier this month, but recently in uh, the past few days where you've seen this line sort of being beaten from all sides so i wouldn't um let's let's pick another uh, line it could be perhaps of more importance 183.50 uh which supported the pair on, the, on its way up is a stronger a stronger uh, support on the downside okay uh so these are the levels i'm watching uh let's see if you have more questions and perhaps talk about the bigger themes in markets Yes, we have some questions. Um, how should CAD be affected by the elections? Asks Happy Pips. And um, yeah, so um, let's uh, try to put um, about this at the beginning. Let's uh, if you can see me now. So we have uh, had elections in Canada and we had a big change of power there. We had um, Justin Trudeau elected as Prime Minister, winning an absolute majority and ousting Stephen, Stephen Harper as Prime Minister. Stephen Harper was in charge for over 10 years. Okay, now Stephen Harper was conservative and he had very clear policies, uh, pro-oil, pro-business, pro-stock market, pro-housing, uh, uh, but maybe problematic in terms of uh, indigenous rights, human rights, uh, immigrant rights, and things like that. Markets prefer conservative governments in general that are more business friendly, even though this business friendly can lead to bubbles and explosions. 
um, and like certainty, most importantly, certainty. So if you have, it matters less if it's conservative or, or left-wing government, but if we have certainty, markets are happy. If we have uncertainty, they're unhappy. Everybody knew who Harper was, who he is, and what his policies are. And Justin Trudeau, which is uh, only 43 years old and uh, never been prime minister, he's new. Um, he did, his party does have a clear agenda, and I think Canada is a very, very stable and steady democracy. Uh, but the immediate reaction was a bit of a surprise from this election of uh, Trudeau and the slide in the Canadian dollar. But as we've seen just in the last hour or so, um, it doesn't make a big difference because we have bigger questions for the Canadian dollar. One is the... Um, one is the... Um, um, <clears throat> one is the... Um, um, Bank of Canada, what's it going to do with the rates? Is it going to cut interest rates or not? Is it going to um, uh, make a change in policy? Uh, and this depends on the economy and on China and other things. So if the Bank of Canada cuts rates, the Canadian dollar falls. If it's upbeat on the economy, the Canadian dollar rises and it has a much bigger impact than the elections. Okay. One thing that could change in the future is if uh, the Canadian government under Trudeau decides to change the mandate of the Bank of Canada to allow it uh, to push inflation higher. That means um, more loose monetary policy uh, pushing the Canadian dollar lower. But central governments, uh, governments don't change the mandate of central banks that often. So I'm not sure we'll see a big difference in, um, in these uh, figures. So in this uh, in this mandate, another thing the government could do is what what Trudeau intends to do is spend more, change the tax regime, tax the rich more, tax the middle class less, uh, which sounds like uh, sound policy, but uh, they're also thinking about deficit spending, and if it goes too far, it could weaken the Canadian dollar, but I don't think it'll have a material impact. The only big change that could happen from the uh, Canadian government to the Canadian dollar more directly is changing the mandate of the Bank of Canada, and I'm not sure they'll enact such change. Okay, so I hope that answers the, the question. Uh, let's see how the Canadian dollar is faring at the moment. Where is my LifeWorks calendar? Okay, let's look at the Canadian dollar. 130.19. Okay, we've seen a dip in... Uh, dollar CAD because we've seen a dip in the US dollar not related to the Canadian elections and now we're seeing it come back up okay uh, I think I've seen another question from uh, where was it yeah I've seen the question here from Jack well, what does it mean SA or NSA in the economic calendar? Well, SA is seasonally adjusted and NSA is non-seasonally adjusted because we have so many figures which are which depend on, on the seasons. Uh, for instance, towards Christmas, people buy more gifts, so it impacts prices of certain things. And uh, prices are impacted by agriculture, of course, and travel season and things like that. So we have usually two measures, seasonal seasonally adjusted and non-seasonally adjusted markets usually look at the seasonally adjusted this also can cause trouble for example uh, easter sometimes falls in march and sometimes in april and it impacts tra travel and it impacts prices so um, um, this also makes a difference if if it falls on a different date it can ruin the seasonally adjusted figures okay um, another question from uh, pan uh, sorry, hi, I missed the beginning. As another speaker was on, can you explain why Euro is going up, please? News regarding PPI was poor. Indeed, uh, we're seeing um, uh, we're seeing PPI in Germany coming at a drop of 0 0.4, worse than expected, and 0 0.2 is expected. But I think that for the Euro markets, are already sort of pricing in uh, some kind of dovish message from um, the ECB. 
okay uh, so it had a small impact and now we're seeing this kind of move of selling the us dollar across the board that's why uh, euro dollar is going up i was unable to find any other news that pushes um pushes the euro um uh, pushes the euro uh, higher but i see that um that euro dollar is not alone that also other currencies are gaining against um against the uh, greenback what i do see now in recent news um well also we talked about this earlier current account balance came out worse than expected uh, seasonally adjusted but also not seasonally adjusted uh, so it, uh, no matter how you look at it, it came worse than expected and we have um another headline um, that says that the governor of the bank of spain linda he says that they can extend the QE program if needed, okay? This is not news uh, because we've heard the same mantra from other uh, people from the ECB. So they can do it, they can extend it. We heard that from Draghi as well. It's not, I don't see that as news. Uh, didn't say we're gonna do something now and they didn't say we're going to buy more bonds now. So extending QE is sort of like forward guidance is like telling the markets okay we'll uh, instead of finishing it in september 2016 we'll finish it in 2018 but you can always change your decision come september 16 so it's more forward guidance than real action like buying more bonds okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> and another question from jackson wild uh, i think it's the CHF dragging market with it. Yeah, um, we could see, just a second. <clears throat> we could see that the Swiss National Bank is <clears throat> perhaps intervening in markets and buying euros to push uh, euro Swiss up and weaken the Swiss franc, and that might be related. <clears throat> you know what? Let's look at uh, euro Swiss and see. If we're seeing action over there, not really. Actually, it's it's going down. So um, it doesn't seem that the Swiss National Bank is propping up the euro just right now. It does that quite often, but I don't think this is the case at this specific moment. Okay. <clears throat> A question uh, from. Um, um, mm -hmm from Shen and from Rob about the Australian dollar. Let's look at the chart. Aussie dollar, uh, triangle, <clears throat> wedge or pendant, whatever you want to call it, trading around this level of 70 to 80, that was the post Fed level. 74 is the level on top and 72 at the bottom. All in all, it rose above the double bottom of 69.35 and then went even higher. Um, Medium term view, I think uh, we're still seeing correction, an upwards correction after a big fall, because uh, I do think the bank, Reserve Bank of Australia is going to cut rates because of Westpac, um, because of the regulation, and that China is slowing down more than expected, or at least even if China is not slowing down more than expected, um, and moving from industry to services, it, it makes a big difference for the Australian dollar. Why? Because Australia depends on Chinese industry, on building houses, on building factories, and less on services. So even if the Chinese uh, services sector blooms and China rocks with excellent growth but based on services, it's not really good news for Australia. So in general, I see you know, Australian dollar uh, after this correction falling a bit more. Also, I still see chances of the US dollar to rise, even though I also have doubts. But in general, I see the recent move from the lows uh, to these levels, to the current levels, more as um, more as a correction and not as uh, not as a change of trend just yet. Uh, if you look at the charts, you can see it both ways. Maybe we've bottomed out, maybe we have here um, higher lows, okay, if we look here at the daily chart and higher highs, um, but I think we can also see still a lower high, at least at the moment, we have the highs here 
of uh, August, and then we have here lower highs. So, um, but technically, but fundamentally speaking, I think that the slowdown in China and uh, a rate cut in Australia have a good chance of uh, pushing um, pushing Aussie dollar back down. Okay. Um, Jake asks my usual question: best bet today? Well, the, the biggest event for, for me today is the uh, simultaneous release of two housing figures at half past 12, the building uh, permits and the housing starts. Um, my best bet for today, I think these figures could be upbeat. And currently we're seeing a correction, uh, a sell-off in the US dollar, and we might see it reverse in the US session because of OK figures. That's my best bet for today. But of course, I may be wrong. OK. Uh, Jack Sirwild asks, uh, dollar Swiss down, euro dollar up, euro falling, um, euro dollar. Uh, let's look at, uh, at dollar Swiss. Uh, yeah, I see it more as uh, not related to the euro in this case, but more just a sell-off of the dollar, so the dollar is selling off against the euro and against the Swiss franc. Because if we look at, at your Swiss, uh, even um, Swiss franc is strengthening more than the euro because your Swiss is falling. So I don't see it as related to an intervention. And I also see a dollar CAD uh, falling. And in general, I see a weaker uh, US dollar in the last hour or so. So it seems more like a sell-off of the US dollar than an intervention by the Swiss National Bank. Question by Vedran. Hello, pound yen. Is it possible to go to 187? First of all, anything is possible. Now for a more serious answer. Um, <clears throat> I see 186 is an important line of resistance. Now we're at 184, 511. So 187 is a bit far, but you know, um, see, uh, 186, I marked it as uh, important resistance because uh, this was support line right here in late September, okay? 187 was more uh, the higher end of that range. Um, I say I think 186 is an important level to watch because it was support in September and then the next line is 188, 188.10 because that was the high level back in September. 187 may be the middle of the range but in order to reach 87, I would look first for a convincing break of 186. That's for me a more important level. Okay. Um, and in general, pound uh, yen that we're looking at right now is influenced by uh, monetary policy as well. In the UK, we're expecting at some point a rate hike. In Japan, perhaps more monetary easing. On, um, on 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 uh, October 30th in 10 days time, I think the chances are a bit low. So I would see at, at least uh, from what we know now, the chances of pound yen moving higher are low because they believe the yen could strengthen. But we've seen last year, the Bank of Japan did surprise everybody and sent the yen crashing. That means it sent um, pound yen higher. Let's look see if we can have uh, last year's on the weekly chart let's see if we have in october yeah it's more or less here uh, too many lines here but we see uh, pound yen soaring higher uh it was at lower levels before the move and then it jumped all the way to right to yeah it made the big move higher anyway um Let's move back to the hourly chart. And another question from Pan. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a good question. Why, why am I not a millionaire? Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be. So uh, uh, <laughs> it's still it's still open. Um, you're welcome uh, for, for the uh, answers, questions. And um, I guess it's about time to wrap. If you don't have any more uh, questions, um, yeah, uh, let's look again just one more time at 
euro dollar okay it's off the highs we've seen it rise all the way to one uh oh, that's quite a nice move back to the shoulder line at 113.64 now it's at 113.53 still looking for direction still lots of tension markets towards the decision of the european central bank due in two days and three hours or so okay uh, so i guess it's uh time to wrap up the show and yeah let's begin from our so this is the wrap up for tuesday october 20th um we've had some action in markets and we're expecting some more, of course. So the recent data was poor in the Eurozone, a miss of PPI 0.4%, and Eurozone current account um, came out worse than expected. But this doesn't hurt the Euro, which managed to climb back above um, the head and shoulders line it lost, and rising back, still lots of tension towards the ECB. Will they or won't they? Will they hint, won't they hint about extending or expanding? Uh, so this might keep the euro dollar a bit tight uh, for the next two days. Okay, the big event overnight was the election results in Canada. We have a new prime minister in Canada. Uh, the Liberal Party, headed by Justin Trudeau, won the elections with a sweeping result. The initial reaction in the Canadian dollar was a small sell of the Canadian dollar. Markets prefer the devil that they know. Uh, so far, we've seen dollar CAD rise nicely. But didn't reach resistance at 130.70, and since then uh, we've seen it sort of wobble around 130. It's uh, an important event for Canadians, for Canadian politics, for human rights, for internal affairs. A bit less for markets, unless and that we have a change in the mandate of the Bank of Canada, which is unlikely at the moment. Okay, uh, more events. The RBA was relatively upbeat on the economy. But this was before the uh, news, the regulatory news, so it has little impact. Uh, Aussie dollar is sort of entrenched in this pendant, in this triangle around the 7280 level, which was the post Fed high. Let's see where it'll break. We talked about that in the show. Uh, I believe this is still a correction, and we can see Aussie dollar fall lower. A lot depends on China, of course. Uh, more news and events ECB is in focus. And, uh, but for today, we have events mostly from the US. Before the US, we have Governor Mark Carney of the Bank of England talking a bit more about Brexit. Maybe he'll drop something about monetary policy. Pound dollar is stable under 155. Okay, uh, right here, uh, 154, 155 is the range. And uh, later we have housing data from the United States, building permits, housing starts, if they go in the same direction, both positive, it's dollar positive. If they go south, it's of course negative for the US dollar. But it uh, often happens that they go mixed. One goes one way, the other goes the other way. And that leaves us all confused. The housing sector has been a stronger part of the US economy so far. Then we have at 1 p.m. Bill Dudley, an important influential member of the FOMC then uh, Jerome Powell, he usually doesn't talk about monetary policy and don't expect too much from Janet Yellen because it's only introductory remarks in a ceremony. Okay, and for those trading the Kiwi, which is still trading at high ground, we have the global dairy trade or prices of milk. And this could, uh, um, we had four consecutive gains. Let's see if we'll have another gain, could send it maybe above 69. If it'll be terrible, under 67.40 lines I'm watching. More lines uh, to watch um, in dollar yen 119.60, getting closer back to the hug, hug, big hug of the 120 level. 118.10 and 120.120 are the lines to watch. And there's another currency pair that we didn't talk about. No, that's about it. Uh, tomorrow morning, we don't have any specific event, but later this week, of course, the ECB decision on um, Thursday and the Bank of Canada's decision on Wednesday. That's uh, tomorrow. These are uh, the big events for currencies that are already starring at the moment. Okay, let's see if we have just a bit more. 
one more question um, from Ross. Where's strong support for your dollar today? Well, I see it at 113.05, which was uh, the low yesterday, but 112.90 is uh, more strong support, followed by 112.15. And um, UK Kev asks, do you see uh, the pound New Zealand starting to turn after the recent correction? I'll have to look at that chart quickly. Uh, um, pound NZD, I'm not sure I have a good chart for you right now. So in general, uh, New Zealand is cutting the rates and and, and uh, the pound uh, in the United Kingdom are expected to raise rates. So um, the general direction should be up, but I promise to take a um, closer examination of this chart uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, hope to see you and we'll talk not only about the general fundamentals, but also about the chart. And um, yeah, so I guess it's uh, uh, time to go. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you FX Street for the show. You're welcome to tell your friends, come every morning. And of course, this is recorded. Also, the wrap is recorded if you want to catch up on the most important details. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.